Hello YouTube, Mr. Report, and Tutor subscribers. This is Taro from Taro03.com. Today is August 23rd, 2020. And this is the um, Mr. Report newsletter number 16. And the featured article is for Karen, and she's asking about the Garden of Eden and Jerusalem. This newsletter program is about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation. Before we get started, I'd like to go down here and show you what that means. This is the Black Star Investigation section, and this is the Scripture videos. These six introductory videos, you go through them in this order, they're going to help to straighten out broken doctrine. Those of us that are mixing together the Word of the Cross, Gospel message for today in the Gospel of the Kingdom. That's another Gospel. The Gospel Jesus Christ preached when he was John the Baptist preached. Peter, John, and James on the day of Pentecost preached the Gospel of the Kingdom. When God raised Christ from the dead, he revealed Galatians 1, 11, and 12. The gospel which I preach is not according to man, but he received it through revelation of Jesus Christ. After God raised Christ from the dead, God gave Christ this mystery. Paul used the word mysterion 20 times to describe things never before shared. Never, it was hidden in God and revealed through his ministry. That's why a lot of people think that Paul's out of his mind because he's saying things differently than what Christ taught in the four Gospels. There's a reason for that. Israel rejected the Gospel of the Kingdom. He put the, the uh, Kingdom dispensation on the back burner. That's going to start with the day of the Lord that's coming right now with the Black Star. We're right close to the day of the Lord starting. Just before the rapture of the church, the Holy Spirit will deposit us like a sealed letter to the Lord that we will meet him in the air. Just like Paul says, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Thessalonians 5, the day of the Lord begins with the sudden destruction that comes suddenly. Guess who's the cause? The black star. Just like in the days of Moses, just like in the days of Noah. It's coming now for the prophet of Acts chapter 3. Start at verse 19. It's going to come again at the end of the, end of the age. Many people think that we're at the end of the age now. The day of the Lord hasn't even started yet. Watch these videos in this order. You'll be prepped to read my book, The Mystery Explained. And everyone that subscribes to The Mystery Report, it's just $25 per year. You're going to get a copy of my book, 555 pages, 80 color-coded diagrams to help you see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. Once you see it, it changes everything. It changes everything. This, the, uh, just $2 a month gets you access to the newsletters and the Dropbox folder. And everything is a breadcrumb trail laid out for you. There's already enough information in that Dropbox 40 to see God's hidden wisdom. Then those of you that want extra, you want to, like Karen, you want to write me questions, be your tutor, send me your questions, send you the answers, then you want to subscribe right here. And again, you get a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained, and then you have the benefit of me paying your postage whenever you get your nanosilver. So let me get back over here. This right here, the Waken Radio series, this was from 2012, and this is a breadcrumb trail in its, of its own. Starting with number one, two, these are different hour-long radio shows that were put together back in 2012 at Awakened Radio. And here, there was a Bible chat program, simply not enough time to be able to, my apologies for that. <clears throat> but you have links right here in this newsletter. You can click on this, and there were questions and answers. Okay, now let's get down to nitty-gritty here of what Karen's asking about. And remember, you missed report, um, you tutor subscribers, you guys drive the narrative here. You send me the questions, like Karen is right here. She was featured in the last newsletter because she's the one. She's in the driver's seat right now because she's the one that sent me the questions. You can do the same thing. So Karen wrote uh, yesterday on the 22nd. And... Um, a oh, good idea whenever you're sending me questions is to give me Bible quotes. Bible quotes. That uh, whenever you you whenever you're writing, generally I can tell where you're coming from by the words you use. Having read the Bible so many times, the New Testament over a hundred times, 
and uh, breaking everything down in the original languages over decades of research. But if you'll send me the quotes, then that helps me to see the substance of your question in the context of what it, the way that you're interpreting a particular um, passage of scripture. So Karen wrote, she says, God says his throng is north of earth and he uses the planet as his footstool. So my answer is yes and no. So I'm assuming, and then if I don't have the Bible verse, I must assume because see his footstool, that, that, that phrase is only used a few times in the Bible. And Isaiah 6, 6, 1, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. The heaven here, because there's a heaven and there's a highest heaven. The heaven here is heaven of Genesis 1, 1. So if you keep reading in Genesis 1, 1, then you're going to get down to Genesis 1, 8, where it says the expanse or the firmament, depending on the translation. There's, a, there's a, waters above the expanse firmament. There's waters below the expanse firmament. The waters below the firmament are the earth. The waters above the firmament are the heavens. And the firmament, the expanse, is heaven. Well, what happened to heaven of Genesis 1, 1? You see, there's a heaven and there's a highest heaven. The heaven, that's, that's Solomon and David. Back in 1 Kings 8, what is it, 8, 26? <clears throat> Pardon me. So this diagram, this is one of the 80 diagrams in the Mystery Explained. The heaven here is heaven of Genesis 1-1, where the earth is the entire all things from John 1-1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, which is heaven. The Word was with God, heaven and earth. I mean, that God and heaven. And the Word was God because the Word and God are the same thing in this infinite realm. God and His Word in the infinite realm, same thing. Heaven is created. Earth is created. Heaven is an incarnation. Earth is an incarnation. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. See the color coding? God is the Spirit. Is that John 4, 24? God is spirit. He's a spirit witness. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This, and then in the beginning was the Word. Same thing. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things, this is, I'm quoting from John 1, 1 through 3 in verse 3 now. All things are made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. All things is the earth which was a singularity in Genesis 1.1. No such thing as angels, no such thing as men, no such thing as women. Only living souls that were created, perfect, existed in the perfect earth until it was made formless and void. When it was made formless and void, God had to reconstitute. So the work God's doing in Genesis 1 is the reconstitution of the broken universe that was a singularity in Genesis 1.1. So the Big Bang, you can Google the Big Bang Theory is a myth. It's posted all over the internet. That was written, I wrote that back in like 2004. And uh, the Big Bang Theory of creation is a myth. It is not true. The Big Bang is the formless and void part. It was the destruction of a previously existing universe that was perfect, mature, complete. So whenever we see what happens after everything's made formless and void, God sends the light. That's the same light from John 1, 4 through 9. Same light. The, the reason, there's a numerology to God's word. So the singularity you see in Genesis 1, 1 is laid out in tabernacle form in John 1, 1 through 3. And then the light of, of verse 3 is the same light of John 1, 4 through 9. So this is the heaven, the highest heaven, David and Solomon know all about it, and this is the heaven that's just regular heaven, that's between the heavens and the earth. And if you notice when you look at each of these three witness sets here, that there's a spirit witness, a blood witness, and a water witness. These are the three witnesses of the Almighty from Revelation 1.8. God who is, is the one speaking in Genesis 1.26, when he says, let us make man like us. There's a million different interpretations to that. The one that I'm giving you here is the truth. God who is, 
is in real time, time and space, knows every single thing that's happening at this very instant. His prophet is God to come. He's in the future all the time. God who was is the priest. Just like my father who art in heaven. Many people don't know the difference between my father who art in heaven and the almighty. They think they're the same thing. They're not. I know them both intimately and they are not the same person. My father who art in heaven gets his name from the heaven of Genesis 1.1. The highest heaven. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, three witnesses of the Word, or of heaven, that are the same thing. Then the three witnesses of the heavens, heaven, and earth testify for the earth of Genesis 1.1. The heaven testifies for the original singularity. The Son testifies for the original singularity. And God who is, who's speaking in Genesis 1, also speaks for the Almighty, for the original singularity. That's the way all three witness, witness mystery sets work. All the blood witnesses testify for the original singularity. Your soul testifies for you as a living soul before you were broken into the spirit, soul, and body that you are right now. So the creation is broken. The reason that, that relativity and quantum do not reconcile is because you're trying to define all three witnesses just by testifying the testimony of the earth. That's like trying to define the family by the testimony of the woman. When you need the man, the woman, and the seed. And so a little background on the, uh, the three witnesses and the mystery process to help you to see the pattern so that we can begin answering these questions or these statements from Karen and then we can get our feet on the path through the narrow gate towards life, towards understanding of what God is really testifying about in his living word. So the heaven here is heaven of Genesis 1-1 where the earth is the entire all things. See that statement makes more sense now doesn't it? Um, all things universe that includes the seen water witness, visible universe, and the unseen, the spirit witness, the heavens, the blood witness is heaven, as the Lord's footstool. So heaven of Genesis 1, 1 is, is the Lord God's throne, and the earth, heaven, heaven, and earth is his footstool. Heaven standing between God's infinite realm and the Lord's is the Lord's throne. That's right here. Characterized as the realm of the word, which is heaven that is between God and men, the heavenly man, Christ Jesus, you're looking at him. Many people read 1 Timothy 2.5, believing that this man is a living, walking, talking man. It's not. This is a man. This is a man. This is a man. You as a spirit, soul, and a body is the same as a man. Why is the number of man number is six? Many ministers are going to tell you the number of man is six, but they don't know why. All witnesses, spirit witnesses have the number one. All blood witnesses have the number two. All water witnesses have the number three. The blood witness is the witness that came last that is made first. Behind the spirit witness that's always first. If you think about it, whenever the Holy Spirit came out of the word, see it came out first, right? The son could not be begotten until the power from on high, talking to Luke 135. So the power on high overshadowed the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Child is called the Son of God. So the Son of God came last, right? The blood witness came last because the, the Spirit and the water had to overlap one another, just like with the heavens and the earth. But the blood witness has the number two. Even though it came last, it's made first. So when you see this, the first is last and last is first thing, that's what it's talking about. It's talking about the mystery process and what came last that is made first. Similarly, the gospel of the kingdom came first before the gospel of the grace of God. But the gospel of Israel rejected the gospel of the kingdom, fell into tran transgression, Romans 11, 11. Just like E fell into transgression. Is that 1 Timothy 2, 14, 15, 16? 
they were destined to fail because the number three witness that came last had to be made first. So our body of Christ had to be formed first because we must occupy the heavenly places after the Satan's children are chained, the powers of this darkness, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, the powers of this darkness have to be chained. And then Elijah comes to restore all things. Guess the gospel that he's preaching. So many ministers believe that Elijah is going to come during the day of the Lord and preach the word of the cross gospel message and it is not going to happen. Go read Matthew 24, 14. This gospel of the kingdom must go to the whole world and then the end will come. When Elijah comes, he's going to preach the gospel of the kingdom just like John the Baptist, just like Jesus Christ, just like the 12 apostles on the day of Pentecost until Israel rejected it. This time it's going to happen because the devil's children are going to be chained and we, the body of Christ, we're going to judge the world and the angels, 1 Corinthians 6, 2 and 3. We're going to judge the world and the angels. We have to be in the heavenly places, sitting in those heavenly chairs, pushing the levers as Elijah is restoring all things. Remember, it's the restoration is going to be on earth as it is in heaven. So heaven's got to be restored first. That's why the devil's children have to be chained. And we are the ones that are going to occupy those places. That's why God is calling us by his grace. He needs us to sit in those heavenly places to replace the devil's children that are about to be chained at the start of the day of the Lord. <clears throat> Pardon me. So let me start over here at the beginning. Heaven standing between God's infinite realm and the Lord the, is the Lord's throne, which is where Jesus Christ was raised far above all the heavens, Ephesians 4.10 that you see testifying as the earth in figure one and figure two. Christ was raised above all the heavens, heavens of Genesis 1, 6 through 8, all the heavens into the highest heaven, where this heavenly man is, the heavenly man, Christ Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Only Paul makes reference to Christ Jesus because he knows that heaven of Genesis 1, 1 and the word are the same thing Broken into the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just like our bodies are now broken in. Our li we were living souls. We have an angel half in the heavens. The man half down here is the water witness. Just like the woman is the water witness of man. And man is the image and glory of God. The angel is the image and glory of God. And the man is the image, is the water witness. Part of that. Take the woman, put her back inside the man. Take the man, put him back inside the angel. Voila, you have a living soul. Just like all the living souls that were on the perfect earth, singularity of Genesis 1-1. So, there is a Messiah of heaven. We know what his name is, don't we? That is our Lord Jesus Christ. And there is an earthly Messiah too. In Adam of the garden. That's why the Lord God, the Lord God in Genesis 2 is the Lamb of God. Same thing. Whenever John the Baptist testified to Jesus Christ, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world, right? Because Jesus Christ walking around the earth is the incarnation of the Lamb of God that's in heaven. The heaven of this creation, the heaven of Genesis 1.8. The Lamb of God in heaven of Genesis 1.8 is the incarnation of heaven. And heaven is the incarnation of the word that's in God's infinite realm. That sounds like a lot of incarnating, doesn't it? The truth says exactly what God's word says without creating a single contradiction. So there's a Messiah in the heaven. There's a Messiah on the earth. There's a heavenly Messiah. There's an earthly Messiah. Who uses the different, okay. Who is Adam of the garden who uses different skins. Genesis 3.21. Adam and Eve. The verse prior says that Eve is mother of all the living. The next one, they're put in human skins, human skins on the earth, because everything prior to Genesis 3.21 happened in heaven. That's why there's no procreation. The Lamb of God in the center of the throne in Revelation 7.17, 7, you just look around that throne and you're going to see the heavenly environment. That's the heavenly garden, where Adam and Eve testify before the Lord of the earth, which is the same exact thing Elijah said. He testifies the Lord before whom I stand. Because he's one of the lampstands. The, the, the heavenly witnesses are lampstands. The earthly witnesses are olive trees. There's two of them, Adam and Eve. 
They were standing side by side with Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Mount of Transfiguration Elijah and Moses, Adam and Eve. I know it sounds fantastic, to, to, especially if you're hearing it for the first time. This is exactly what the types teach in God's Word. So the uh, the earthly Messiah, there's an earthly Messiah too in Adam who uses different skins. In Abraham, Sarah is Eve. David, Bathsheba is Eve. With David, the example, David is over here, looking over there. He's the heavens, looking over into the earth. And there's Bathsheba bathing in the pool, the water witness. Bathsheba, if you can't see the water witness of Bathsheba, then God bless you. Bathsheba, Eve, heavens and earth, same thing. And John the Baptist, who is another skin for Elijah. That Israel and even disciples did not recognize. Jesus Christ told the disciples that John the Baptist was Elijah. Matthew 11, 14. If you can bear it, he is Elijah, who is to come. But here in verse in uh, Matthew 17, when you get down to 12 and 13, then he says that they did not recognize him. He's not talking about them not recognizing him as Elijah. He told them that he was Elijah. They did not recognize him, Elijah, as another skin for Adam. That's the message. Because John the Baptist, he's the, the son of a priest, right? Zacharias, son of a priest. And he's the prophet. He said that he was Elijah, but it, Christ always also says that he's more than a prophet. Because he's also David the king. Belongs in king's palaces and king's clothing christ gives so many clues to the man that he created to be the earthly messiah i'm not talking about the earthly messiah of this planet the earthly messiah of the entire visible and invisible universe just like jesus christ his throne is heaven over the entire father son holy spirit realms on earth Adam, as in heaven. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Pardon me again, having a little difficulty. So this very complicated diagram in the mystery explained, they begin very, very simple, and then they get more and more complicated. This is the one of the heavens and the earth. See little David down here? He's the king. He's the blood witness in the middle. The judge, the ruler. Just like the lamb that's in heaven, right here. Just like God who is. God who was and God who was to come. God is seated in Christ Jesus. Guess who's at his right hand? Jesus Christ. There's the Holy Spirit elect and there's the Father elect. Above the highest heaven. Heavenly authorities. That's who they are. Paul makes reference to them. And then the Lamb here. There's the body of Moses on one side. The body of Elijah is on the other side. This is the picture of the Mount of Transfiguration that you're seeing right here. I'm going to make mention to it because I mentioned to David down here, Mount Moriah. That's where Jacob's ladder sits on the earth. The day is going to come when there's no more death. People do not die anymore. Remember Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Death is thrown into the lake of fire. Hades is thrown in the lake of fire. Don't need it anymore. But how are people going to go to heaven? Think about it. how they're going to go to heaven if nobody dies. They're going to serve David as a prophet or a priest. Same pattern as you see up here. Same pattern you see up here. Same thing. Because down here is like us. Revelation 126-28. So once these prophets and priests mature, David sends them up Jacob's ladder. Off you go. As the man is ascending, his angel half is descending. So there's a sea of glass that you read about. Revelation. That's one place. Revelation 7, start at 14. Those that come from the Great Tribulation are standing there on that sea of glass. As they're martyred, that's that's where they show up. Until the, the number is counted and then the end comes. That's why it has to go to the whole world. And then the last disciple, kingdom disciple, has to be martyred before the end can come. They are all standing on the sea of glass. They can see that part. The part they do not see is the invisible sea that's behind the Lamb. The angel, as the man's going up, the angel half's coming down. At the marriage supper of the lamb, 
the man half and the angel half are put back together again and they actually walk right into the lamb and join us in Christ Jesus here because of the incarnation aspect so therefore David so many people miss this they think that Jesus Christ is coming onto the earth to rule it's not what it says David it says David will feed them he will feed them himself he's during this day of the Lord David this is what it's talking about Ezekiel 34 David is the earthly Messiah doing things on this planet that the Lamb of God the word incarnate in heaven of this creation is doing in heaven that God in his son reconciling the world to himself is doing in the highest heaven on earth as it is in heaven as it is in God's infinite realm fashion David Elijah John the Baptist is Adam earthly prophet priest and king is the earthly Messiah John 3 31 John the Baptist testifying he that comes from above is above all he who test he who is of the earth that's him testifies of the earth but he that comes from heaven that's the highest heaven is above all he's talking about Jesus Christ he is putting Jesus Christ above himself because Jesus Christ is this entire realm John the Baptist is this entire realm if you whenever you're looking at these realms Jesus Christ is laying over on his side he's on the altar he's sacrificed into the Father Son and Holy Spirit because as one thing they are the word same thing here this is the earth divided into the heavens heaven and earth this is Adam's spirit this is his body this is his soul the Lamb of God incarnate from here he's the guy in charge putting Adam back together one member at a time Humpty Dumpty style that's what this heaven and earth were created for in the first place and God becoming all in all in the end I'm going to show you the diagram down below is about getting the last host reassembled so that Adam can be restored here in God's infinite realm this is the body this is the soul this is the first Adam this is the last Adam put the two back together again body and the soul this is where they go back to this is the only realm that's real this is created and this is created for the purpose of restoring one son of God okay so yes this literal planet is the location of David's throne but as the earthly Messiah created for the mission way back in Genesis 2 7 incarnating again and again like Eve as one of the two olive trees testifying to their obedient children and to their disobedient children through the ages so yes it's for a man to die once and then the judgment Hebrews 9 27 that's true for every seventh day people walking that is everyone going to be incarnate in this universe once per age that's it six day people they incarnate many many times the only exception are the begotten's Adam and Eve, the only two that are not born of women, the only two witnesses, one spirit, one water. They come again and again and again. The same rules that the uh, the rules that apply to every other seventh day person that's ever going to incarnate here do not apply to them because they are the begotten. They're the two olive trees. They're special. They're the first and the last. The, the two witnesses of Revelation 11. You notice they got the same powers of Elijah and Moses. Because Elijah and Moses are two skins for the original cultivators of the land. They're the ones that keep coming back again and again and again. So <clears throat> this is this is a uh, Karen. Something I read a while back said that originally Jerusalem was where the North Pole has traditionally been located until subsequent flooding and other natural catastrophes gradually shifted the position to its present location. So gave that some thought. Looking back at all my research for decades and decades, and for me, this is a fallacy. From my perspective, my understanding of, of God's living word. Now, it is possible that what you're saying is true, because when the black star comes, the black star and this magma plume formation have a relationship, separates the tectonic plates. Then whenever the magma wave action comes from the bursting of the Boise Barrier Corridors, then certain parts of the continents rise, some fall. So there's change, there's terraforming. This is great. This is God's stuff. It's possible of what you're saying is going to be true. 
for me and the research, the decade of research from now, Project Black Star, and looking at these things, just the shoe just doesn't quite fit for me. But it is possible. I mean, maybe anything's possible. The concentration of magnetite in our planet is what makes the North Pole the North Pole. And that concentration, whenever you look down on the North Pole, you see the landmass the way that it is. That's the way the landmass is now, but you'd have to change the distribution of the magnetite. So that's not going to change in the rising and the lowering. Um, but then, you know, you, when you go back further to Pangaea, you know, it's maybe something like that is possible. But the other thing to remember is, is that this solar system that we're in right now with our sun, the big, the big cheese, the big chicken head honcho, wasn't the big head honcho. The black star is the core. It is the remnant remains of our sun's previously much larger binary twin. So whenever these stars, they orbit one another or they orbit a third point in space, they come in near proximity, in other words. And when they do, the big sun is going to wipe out anything that tried to get started in our solar system. So the larger sun had to go supernova and create that remnant body. And when you do the research, you'll find out the Oort cloud has way too much stuff to be a, the the uh, the, the uh, debris from a single solar system. That's what came from our binary twin solar system. So whenever the the binary sun imploded, then it, all this mass, all the everything from its Oort cloud, everything from its asteroid belt, wind up here. So it the sun was suddenly the largest thing going, and the gravity well gradually pulled those objects in. 99.9% .9 of the objects were hyperbolic. That means that they orbit the sun one time and they're flung out. That's why the Oort cloud is a ball that's around us. So then life started. So the Pangean argument falls on his face because Pangea, the, the migration of the, the original continent, then that happened while the, the other sun was killing off anything that tried to start here, in, in my view. Okay, so to me, that's a fallacy. So... Rather than speculate, then I'm going to tell you what God has shown me through his word. Because the three witnesses, the pattern of three witnesses are everywhere throughout his word. And th this is this was, this was is my life. This is my legacy. This is the most important work that I'm ever going to do. Far more important. You'll see when we get up to heaven, the, this is far more important than any pro Project Black Star, 9-11, nanobots, uh, anything else to do with anything. This is it. The Tabernacle of David to be restored, see, Acts 15, 16, it's still in the future, in this age. The tabernacle of David to be restored includes the original water witness, earthly location of Abraham's promised land. That is the same land of the land of the garden, stretching from the Nile River in Egypt to the Euphrates River with heaven and heaven counterparts. You can see them over here. Euphrates River. Okay, and Elijah is going to smack his mantle on at the Jordan River, on the banks of the Jordan River, for Israel to pass from the water witness part into the blood witness part. So some people, they go back to 1947, the prophecy is fulfilled. The prophecy is not fulfilled. Go back to Genesis 15, 18, and you're going to see that the kingdom, or if you go to Ezekiel, last two chapters of Ezekiel, you'll see that the boundaries of the kingdom are all the way over in Egypt into the Euphrates River. That's the kingdom. That's going to be a walled kingdom, the greatest kingdom on the earth for 3,000 years in the future. Until Daniel's prophecies. Daniel's prophecies are all about the end of the age. The 70 weeks, 490 years are from the end of the age backwards. When you get to the 62nd weeks when the Messiah is cut off, so many people think that that's already happened in this past. It's not. Because Elijah is going to be recognized as David, who's going to set up that kingdom, and he's going to live for the entire 3,000 years until he's cut off at the end. Daniel 9, start at 24. He's going to be cut off. He's going to be killed. He's going to be killed in his own guillotine. Is the way that's going to happen. The guillotine, that's going to be part of the game in the day of the Lord. And it's not going to be used as often as you think. It's going to be set up in the place 
the city is set up for the guillotine. I know that. I know kind of how that sounds. Whenever that thing falls, it, it sends a boom throughout the whole place. Everybody in the town, everybody in knows what just happened by the sound that it takes. And the the, the bad are are have their heads cut off every morning. In the it happens always in the morning time for a reason. So um. Anyway, I'd like to give you a little peripheral. I'd like to give a little bit of milk and a little bit of meat, too, for those that have been following the research here and uh, that are more mature. So the t tabernacle is going to be restored. The Garden of Eden stretches from the Nile River, like you see in this diagram right here. This is set up exactly like the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. This is the same pattern of heaven and the same pattern of God's living word. It has the same three witnesses. It's just turned around from the way I'm, I'm demonstrating this here. But that is why Adam and Eve are olive trees on the earth, lampstands in heaven and the heavens, testifying before the Lord of the earth. The tabernacle of David follows the same spirit, water, blood, patterns of God, heaven, the word, earth, all things, the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, the tabernacle of Moses and the temple, God's living and God's living word, so on and so forth, which is the image of man, spirit, blood, water. And she says, Carl Gallup maintains that Jerusalem was the exact site of the garden. That is pretty easy to disprove because the garden is big. Jerusalem is little. The garden is a big place. And there's a heaven counterpart, which is around the throne of the Lamb, by the way. And then there's an earthly counterpart, and it runs all the way. For me, it is the, the land of that include that is included in the land of Mesopotamia. That's going to be the place. Read uh, Haley's Halley's Bible Handbook. You get to about a page. What is it, about 111? 100, it depends on the the uh, the year, the edition you get. But you're going to read about kings that rule for up to 48,000 years. Way back when Mesopotamia. The kingdom that Israel is going to be is going to restore is going to be in the image of the Mesopotamian from long, long, long time ago. They dealt with the Black Star every 3,600 years. They knew exactly what to do. It was no big deal to them. They didn't treat it like everybody knew about it. Whenever it came, lifespans were in the thousands and thousands of years. So it was a normal thing back then. It's being used now for genocide of the population. Uh, the garden is much larger than the land of Jerusalem, where the Jordan River represents a veil, as, as shown above, dividing the wilderness, which is the Egypt, the world, the Nile River. That is the court of the tabernacle from the holy place represented by the land between the Jordan River and the Euphrates River. Jerusalem sits at the court entrance position on the wrong side of the veil. Currently, that will change to the blood witness section in the new earth when the creation is made new like Revelation 21 1 many times Mount Moriah where Christ was crucified will be the location of Jacob's ladder where men the water witnesses will ascend to stand upon the sea of glass from the new earth new uh, the new heaven earth diagram that's above to stand with Peter John and James providing intercession for heavenly hosts before the throne that is the water witness section in heaven before the Lamb, which is why you will see Jerusalem remain in the water witness section until the Reformation is referred to in, in Hebrews. The Reformation takes place and the new earth takes on blood witness qualities and men walk the earth as living souls in the image of Adam of Genesis 2.7. Therefore, Spirit, blood, and water types teach that Jerusalem is currently west of the original Garden of Eden earthly location because the men ascending are still water witnesses, testifying from the court section outside the holy place section as the court location will in time disappear like all water witnesses and spirit witnesses on the way to the restoration of all things that is still early on in the restoration process we have we're, this is just the first fruits very 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 beginning of what god's doing in the restoration of all things if 
And then she says, if the first two points are true, then this would have found the garden directly beneath God's throne at his feet. What do you think? The heavenly garden counterpart surrounds the Lamb's throne. The center of the throne, Revelation 7.17. Where Adam was first created as a heavenly living soul, and where Eve was originally taken from his side, where Adam and Eve were testifying as the lamp stands candlesticks, and where they continue testifying before the lamp to this day, on earth as olive trees, as it is in heaven as lampstands, as it is in the heavens, which follows the same three witness pattern of God, heaven, and earth from Genesis 1 1. See how that's kind of night, kind of all tied together back to the origin, what was laid down as the foundation above. Again, the heaven of Genesis 1 1 is the Lord's throne, for Jesus Christ testifies at the right hand of God today. And the earth, heavens, heaven, and earth are collectively testifying as his footstool, where the Lamb of God, heaven from Genesis 1-1 incarnate, testifies from heaven while taking away the sin of the world through his consecration ministry that started in Genesis 2-4 as the Lord God, for whom Jesus Christ is an incarnation, God's word made flesh in the likeness of the Lamb of God incarnate as heaven of Genesis 1-1, that is an incarnation of God's word testifying simultaneously in God's infinite realm where you are God's. Psalm 82, 6. <clears throat> this is the beginning, which you can use in Genesis 1, 1 or John 1, 1. And this is the end, when God is all in all. And this is what happens in between. What were singularities? God, heaven and earth. They are divided into these three witnesses that I showed you above. The center witness, the blood witness, continues to get larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. Through every age that goes by, the blood witness becomes larger and larger and larger. The water witness decreases. The spirit witness decreases. Until God is going to be all in all, the Son is going to become the Word again. My Father who art in heaven is going to cease to exist. I know that sounds like blasphemy to a lot of people. The Holy Spirit's going to cease to exist. Think about where my Father who art in heaven and the Word were. I'm, I'm sorry. Think about where God, my, my Father who art in heaven and the Holy Spirit were whenever in the beginning was the Word. Where were they? They didn't exist yet, did they? No. They came to exist because the Holy Spirit was pulled out just like Eve. And then Adam overshadowed Eve to beget the seed. The power from on high had overshadowed the Holy Spirit, and then the Son was begotten. All blood witnesses are begotten. Your soul is begotten. The Son is begotten. Heaven of Genesis 1-8, begotten. All blood witnesses are begotten, and they all testify for the original singularity. Do you know why? Because the Son must testify. The Son must judge. The Father, my Father art in heaven, has to give the Son the authority to judge. Because by the end of the judgment, my Father art in heaven does not even exist anymore. He doesn't want to exist anymore. Because He, the Son, and the Holy Spirit collectively are the Word. That's what this is all about. Getting back to being the Word again. Where the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all the same thing. Just like God to, God to come, God who is, and God who was. Being the Almighty. Heaven, heaven, and earth is going to be the earth again. All restored. All of these incarnations of God's Word, Heaven, Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, are required because the universe, Heaven, Heaven, and Earth, is currently broken into three witnesses of Spirit, Blood, and Water. As the restoration of all things is just starting to culminate at the end, is just starting to culminate at the end of the ages. That's the, well, the Greek phrase is to the ages of the ages. When the sun, it, which is translated forever and ever, when the Son is subjected back to God, 1 Corinthians 15, 27, and then God is all in all. So the Son must be subjected back to God. The Son becomes the Word again. And then He's subjected back to God. So everything you see from Genesis 1, 1 in the sowing process is reaped back again. As it was in the beginning is the way that it's going to be in the end. And as the process of sowing, everything is going to go. So the Eve part has to go back inside the Adam part. 
all that. So that atom, let me see where it was here. Let me go up a little bit here. When the sun is subjected back to God, and God is all in all. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 28. So Adam, the first Adam, will then return to the Lord God's side as the last Adam, so that Adam, a God in God's infinite realm, can be fully restored, raised from the dead, in the likeness of Jesus Christ on this little earth. Adam will be raised above all the heavens that include the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit sections of heaven of Genesis 1-1 to return to God's infinite realm full, mature, and complete with Satan's stones upon his ephod. That's his chest plate. Giving him access to all the hidden doors and passageways that allowed Satan to beguile God's sons in the first place. Which is why heaven and earth, Adam, soul, and body were created in the first place. So there was a lot of deep, deep, this is a, this is on the deeper side right here. This is the kind of report, not that long is it? This is the kind of report and if you watch this video again and again you're going to get more from it. A lot of deep information. That's here. And uh, I'm going to upload this to the Dropbox folder. This will become the next in the chain from the, uh, the newsletters that are there to help the subscribers to the mystery report and the tutor program to see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. Appreciate your support very, very much. Get more information right here at the website, especially if you're interested in seeing God's wisdom. Start right here. And then become a Mystery Report subscriber or a Black Star subscriber. Because you know, either of these four programs that you subscribe to, then you're going to get a copy of my book, The Mystery Explained. And the thing, the diagrams I'm showing you in all these reports, they're all you know, starting from 1 to 80, very simple to the more complicated. They're all laid out in this book that was written in 2005, the summer of 2005, and after decades of research and then only published in 2017. And you can get a, the uh, an author's sign numbered, It'll be autographed by me, and I'm going to be shipped to you. And you can get that right here at this button right here. If that's for $100, I'll pay the shipping. And then uh, it's going to be numbered. It's going to have my autograph on it and a little message to you. And then if you're outside the United States, add $35, and then I'll, I will uh, get I'll get that to you. Appreciate your support very, very much. Get more information right here at the website, and I'll see you on the next Mr. Report.